Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. As we've said in many of our videos, technology has come a long way in the last 50 years, especially in the area of safety. If you're going to drive your Mustang on the street, safety should be a main concern, especially when adding or upgrading parts. In the case of our 65 Coupe, we've upgraded our lighting to much better LED lighting and also added three-point seatbelts for increased safety. Today, we're going to upgrade the brakes and in particular, the brake master cylinder. On the 64 through 66 Mustang, the brake master cylinder was a single reservoir which went onto all four wheels. If you had a problem with your brake lines at any of these wheels, you could actually lose your entire braking system. In 67, Ford switched to a dual ball master cylinder, which had a reservoir for your rear brakes and a separate one for the front. This has become a very popular upgrade for the 64 through 66 cars, and today we're going to show you how to do it using our 65 Coupe. We offer kits that will give you all the parts necessary to do a dual ball master conversion on your early Mustang. Our 65 uses drum brakes, so we're using the 67 through 70 dual ball drum brake master cylinder, which includes the push rod, which we may or may not need, and we'll get to that later. The kit also includes both lines necessary, a plug for the port you're not going to be using, and a union connect to your factory rear brake line. For this installation, you'll need a 3 8 ratchet, 5 8 socket, 9 16 socket, 6 inch extension, 9 16 wrench, half inch wrench, 7 16 wrench, 3 8 line wrench or a standard wrench will work, large flathead screwdriver, and a flashlight. We're going to remove two lines from the distribution block to start the installation. The main line here, and the bottom one here that goes to our rear brake. So I want to make sure you get the correct line. In our case, it's going to be this one here and this one here. Once they're both disconnected, then we can unbolt and remove our master cylinder. We're going to start with the rear brake line, which is the bottom one here. Let's carefully slightly bend that out of the way once it's disconnected. Now we're going to take the supplied plug and put it right in that port we just removed. Now we're going to remove the front line that goes from our factory master cylinder to our distribution block. Before we unbolt the master cylinder from the firewall, we want to disconnect the push rod from our brake pedal. So you can climb underneath the dashboard and you start by removing the harness that goes to your brake light switch. Unfortunately, you can't see it on camera, but right behind the brake light switch, my finger is touching it as a cotter pin. Once you remove that cotter pin, that will actually separate the push rod from the switch and the pedal assembly. Then we're going to unbolt the master cylinder and remove it. There we go, now they're separated. Now that it's disconnected from the pedal, we can remove the master cylinder from the firewall. To do that, you remove these two bolts down here. The top ones can stay, it's just the two bottom ones that hold it to the firewall. We mentioned in the introduction that it comes with a new push rod you may or may not use. What you'll want to do is measure the push rod that comes off the car, make sure the one included is the same length. If it is, you can use it. If not, reuse the original one. Now, unfortunately for our sake, or unfortunately for my sake, but unfortunately for camera's sake, this normally has to be punched out. Ours is broken. It came right out. That is probably not going to happen when you have this at home. What you're going to want to do, put the bottom of this in a vise, now with the push rod still installed, just put it back in here so you can sort of see what I'm saying here. With this in a vise, you want to put a punch or something on this end and you'll want to hammer it out. This usually is difficult to get out. Ours, like I said, happened to be broken so we can't show you. But again, put this in a vise, put a punch through this end here and just hammer until this push rod comes out and then we'll compare it with our new one. As you can see, our factory push rod is longer, so to make sure everything works properly with our brake pedal, we're going to reuse our factory push rod. 
Now that we decided we can reuse our factory push rod, we're ready to bench with the master cylinder. With the push rod, we do offer an adjustable one. So if you wanted to go with a new one, you can buy the adjustable one and measure it out. The factory one's gonna work fine in our application. Now to bench with the master cylinder, you start by removing these two plugs. Install the plugs provided with the master cylinder. Plastic, so just tighten them up by hand. You don't have to actually crank them down. Now we're going to go put it in our vise and bench bleed. I'm going to grab some brake fluid. We're going to top off the master cylinder to start. You don't have to bring it all the way to the very tip top and get close. What you want to do is grab a screwdriver. You can use the push rod, but a screwdriver is going to be a lot easier. And to put it where the push rod is going to go, basically what you're going to do is just push in to get the bubbles out. Again, just keep slowly pushing in. Once you get all the air out, it'll get nice and hard to push it in. You'll have a nice firm pedal, you'll know you have it right. Once you only go about eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, you're done. And before we bolt the master cylinder in, we're gonna install a push rod boot that's included with it. Then install the original push rod. Our original push rod doesn't have a clip on it, so it's basically gonna be held in place by the boot, but once it's bolted on, it'll be fine. Line it up, we're ready to install. We can put the cylinder down into place. And bolt it on. Now we're gonna install the hard lines that are included in our dual bolt conversion kit. This line here with the block fitting is gonna to go to our distribution block, which is gonna run our front brakes. This line here is gonna to go to your rear brakes. I'm not gonna promise you these are gonna fit 100%. Your car could be up to 50 years old. If the lines were changed or distribution block was changed, the fitment may be off a little bit, but they're definitely gonna get you in the neighborhood, which is what we're looking for. We're gonna start with the front brake line, which is actually gonna go from the rear port on our master cylinder over to our distribution block. Basically, it'll fit just like that. Once we tighten it at the distribution block, now we can tighten at the master cylinder. On the rear line, the first thing we're going to do is install the union that's included with our kit. And we can bend that back in the neighborhood where it came from over here. We'll connect this to the master cylinder side first. Now what you want to do here, you basically get an idea of where this is going to sit. It faces downward like it should. Remember, we move that rear line out a little bit. You just want to bend that carefully back towards where your connection is going to be to your master cylinder. The lines are flexible, they're easy to bend, just make sure you don't kink it. Now you want to hold the union while you tighten the fittings. Finally, we can tighten at the master cylinder. Now we're back under the dash, we can reconnect at the pedal. Yeah. 
Once you get the clip in, you install the harness. And your installation's finished. At this point, you want to check to make sure you have a good pedal. Because we bench bled the master cylinder, you should have a good pedal and should be good to go. If you do have a soft pedal, you want to bleed the brakes as normal, starting with the line furthest from the master cylinder. The dual bowl is an excellent safety upgrade, and as we showed, it's a pretty easy installation. Keep in mind these lines are designed for factory lines, so the lines have been changed in your car, you may need some adapters to make it work. Overall, the installation should only take you around an hour, you'll be back on the road in no time.